All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us for a very special episode of Catching Up with Jacob. And uh, Jacob, I don't need to say here you are on the screen. Here we are. Here you are right next to me, live mm -hmm. from Jerusalem. So welcome everyone that's watching and will be watching. Uh, very special episode. We've been uh, planning this for a while. And uh, uh, thank you so much for Jay, Davey, uh, Jordan for being here with us. And uh, you guys have planned this out and, uh, and you made it work. So we appreciate you guys and appreciate those who are watching us. Uh, so blessed to have you from Jerusalem. Uh, albeit nine hours ahead of where I'm used to, Jacob. And, yes. Uh, you're a little bit ahead. Yes. A couple hours. Two hours, yes. Yeah. So it, it's such a blessing to be with Jacob, such a blessing to be with you guys today. And uh, from Jerusalem, couldn't have it any other way. Uh, obviously, I miss my family and everything, but uh, uh, if I had to pick another place to be, it would be Jerusalem with Jacob catching up. So, uh, but Jacob, before we get started, this is because uh, uh, a lot of people don't know, and maybe the, some of them knew, of course, they know that. Uh, but if they're new, they don't remember or they don't think about the fact that you lived here. Yes. You lived here for quite some time. Yes. And uh, coming back here for, obviously you've been coming back for a while, but you, you know, because of the uh, lockdowns, you couldn't make it here for a couple of years. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got here to, to Jerusalem, to, to Israel, where you lived, and some of the changes you've seen over the past 20 some years. Well, you ask a painful, it's about a painful saga. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, we still have a family home here, and our children, of course, born here. My son was in the Israeli army. I just did a little bit of training, but my son was actually in the army for the full three years uh, in a combat brigade and then in the legal corps because he's a lawyer. So my children are born here. My wife came here as a refusenik, as a Jew who was able to get away from the communists. Um, the communists refused her and her family right to leave Romania, but eventually they were able to get out by some negotiation and they came to Israel and my wife was 11. Now, how did I come here? Well, one of the good things about being a believer in the United States is there's more eligible Christian women than there are eligible Christian men. <laughs> and even an ugly guy like me was able to get a very attractive girlfriend uh, in New York. She had been a professional dancer and she got saved and she was very good looking. But she had marital ambitions. Now, I didn't have any marital ambitions. To me, at that time in my life, the only good thing about holy matrimony was that sex wouldn't have been a sin, but that was not a good enough reason <laughs> to jump off the Empire State Building without a parachute. <laughs> and I didn't know why you would even bother dating girls, because I knew what you did when you weren't a Christian, but when you became a believer, I didn't know why, 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 why you even bothered. I mean... Uh, unless you wanted to get married, which I mean, again, that was not on my agenda. And I knew I was in trouble when she called me up one day and she said, hello, honey. <laughs> well, I immediately immigrated to Israel. And I eventually married an Israeli girl. She doesn't call me honey. I'll tell you what she calls me later. But that's the story in a nutshell. <laughs> So you got here, and uh, where'd you live? Where'd you live in, uh, in Israel? Originally, I went to Hebrew University for a while, as did my wife. My wife studied chemistry, actually, and uh, then um, later on mathematics, but initially she studied chemistry, and then she studied um, Jewish history and biblical Hebrew. So she, had a, she has a degree in biblical Hebrew, as well as a mathematical science background. We both went from scientific fields to um, the theological fields after getting saved. And uh, we met here and a lot went on during that time. Uh, won't bore you with it now, but it, it was about four years after I first met her. I led her to the Lord in Jerusalem. I was taking an Arab guy with gangrene to the hospital who I picked up out of the streets, literally the old city. <laughs> and I spoke very little Hebrew at the time, just a little bit that I knew from New York and no Arabic, and Pavia spoke English, and she could speak reasonably good Arabic, and she spoke Hebrew, of course, yes. and she helped me translate, and we got this guy to the hospital, and I, I began witnessing to her, and um, there was an attraction, but there was a big problem. Uh, her parents, being Holocaust survivors, there was an issue like we didn't want them to think that she became a believer in order to marry me. We <laughs> wanted her to them to she became a believer because she believed Jesus, Yeshua was the Messiah, and so forth, and believed the gospel. 
So a lot went on in our lives and the Lord dealt with things. But four years later, we eventually got married. At that point, nice. we, lived in, we lived in Haifa uh, for, some, for some years. I only left Israel to go to seminary in Great Britain. I'd only been to secular college, university. I'd never been to a university, a seminary, a Bible college. So I left Israel f for the purpose of getting a theological education. And then one thing led to another. But we've always kept a home in Israel. Of course, we, we speak Hebrew and our children are born here and uh, there's a family home here. So I've always had a foot here. Um, as does my wife and so forth. Uh, so here we are. So that's the, that's what, a, a culmination of about what, 20, 30 years? Oh, more than that, it goes back okay. to the late 70s. Late 70s, okay. Uh, so you lived in the northern part of Israel, your children were born there, then you, you went to, to London, London, uh, uh, London College, Theological School. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and you never came back to live in, in Israel after that? You stayed in... For short periods of time. Okay, okay. And uh, always in the north, but you spent a lot of time here in Jerusalem. Yeah, I lived in Jerusalem when, when I was younger. Okay, okay, wow. Well, that's that's neat background. I mean, I think a lot of people just miss that fact that, uh, you know, your children are born here, you spend a lot of time here. Basically, this is your third home or second home away from home. Yes, that's right. In New York. And uh, Jacob, so what's what's changed? I mean, uh, talk to me a little bit about the, the Messianic fellowships okay. and just the ambiance. When I first came with, you came today with me to a Messianic fellowship that Moriel um, is, is supportive of, the help yeah. support here. Yes. There were more people in that meeting this morning than there were believers in the entire country when I first came here. Wow. There were more believers this morning at that one meeting we were at yeah. than there were believers in the entire country. Wow. It was a bad place. When I first yeah. came, there were about 200 known believing Jews. Wow in Israel, and everybody knew everybody. It was like an extended <laughs> family. There was only a handful of fellowships, and none of them too big. Yeah. Only a hand, maybe a half dozen or so, something like that. There were some Arab believers, but that was it. Um, everybody knew everybody. It was, there was nothing. And now, <laughs> today, nobody knows how many, <laughs> I'm not saying it's huge, but there's certainly thousands. Yeah. There are thousands of believing Jews already and then when the russians came there were thousands more wow and the russians were saved in the underground church under right. the soviets and they, then were, they came yeah. they were persecuted so they, they they came here so it's it's it is very very different there are a lot more believers here now more than 10 times more than 20 times more wow more than 50 times more uh, I don't even know how many fellowships there are in the country. Nobody does because some of the Russians s still meet in Russian instead of Hebrew, and they have their own meetings. In, no, in, 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 really in, nobody in, in house churches. Nobody even knows. But it's, but it's a lot. A, compared it was a to packed what it was. house today. It was a packed house today for sure. Yep, <laughs> and, and you'll see similar things. Other fellowships. I remember Carmiel. There was six believers. Now you go up to Carmiel, there's 200 in that place. I mean, oh. <laughs> in my lifetime, yeah. so far, six to That's quite a bit. Yeah. That's quite a bit. And, and, and we don't really know the number of us. Certainly Romans 11, I'm thinking of Romans 11. The natural branches are being grafted in again. That's right, that's right. Uh, but Jacob, now, it, 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 explain to me a little bit more what you see, uh, the, the role of the church here in, in Israel, the believers, obviously, the, the conditions, the atmosphere, the society, how it's changed since, you, since you've been gone. And uh, obviously, we're going to talk politically because they had a huge election, but that's part of that. Um, you know, so what's the role of the church now here as there are more believers now? And so now they're shepherding plus being fishers of men. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but it's all an increasing secular society and increasing, uh, I guess, religious society because the religious right is it's very much entrenched in the government now. Uh, so how do you see it? Very much like in the first century, you had Orthodox believers, Judeo-Christian believers of the first century. You had that. But like in the first century, you've got the same kinds of problems, the first and second century. You have Ebionites here. Mm. You have Jews who believe, well, theological Ebionites. Yeah. They believe Jesus is the Messiah, but they deny his deity. Mm. You have secret believers in the Orthodox community. But... If you don't confess me before yeah. men, how am I going to confess you before my father? That's right. They may believe he's the Messiah, but that does not mean that they're born again necessarily. You don't really know. 
um, but there are secret believers even among the Orthodox now. That well, there ha always have been a few, but there are more more now. Mm. Um, then you have multiple factions. You've always had Jewish believers, Arab believers, and some places like Haifa where Jews yeah. and Arabs would meet together. Um, but now it's the Russians. Some of them have integrated into the mainstream Israeli body of Christ, mm. and others Russians have remained. Russian, separate, yeah. culturally, culturally Russian, and, and Russian fellowships with a, the main language is is, is, is Russian. Yeah. Um, you've got that, but you've also got Neo Galatians. You have, mm. a, a, and a lot of these people came from from the United States. They were yeah. not Israeli, <laughs> trying to go, go under the law and live under two covenants. Uh. You've got that. You also have a lot of the same kinds of deceptions that you had that you have globally. For instance, the New Apostolic Reformation. In okay, Israel, it's called that. the Tikkun Movement. Mm -hmm. But it's here. They have the same essential beliefs. People who pr promote Gnosticism and mysticism and all sorts. You've got people who've been tied in with the word faith American money preachers. Another factor here is you've got the indigenous church, but you also have the expatriate church. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who come here from other countries because they want to live in the land of the Bible and see prophecy being fulfilled. Right. And a lot of these people are lunatics, a lot of them. They, they don't witness, they don't evangelize, they believe God's going to save the Jews, they just have to come here and love oh, the Jews. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for instance, the uh, New Testament says the ambassadors of Christ are the ones who preach it. You have organizations claiming to be Christian embassies who have a non-evangelistic policy. Wow. You even have organizations that promote Aliyah and immigration to Israel, but sign agreements not to, to withhold the gospel. <laughs> and, and they say that's their ministry. Yeah. So you've got <clears throat> the Jewish, the Arab, the Russian, the expatriate. It's multifaceted. You got, and then you've got the heretics. You've got the Neo-Galatians. Uh, and, and you've got Ebionites, yeah. Neo-Ebionites. That, that's essentially what they are theologically. Yeah. But there is a, still a mainstream core of believers that are integrated, that there are expatriates who, fit, you'll see Koreans and stuff who speak Hebrew, yeah. who come to it. I met some and, today. And, yeah, or Brazilians and things like that. Uh, and um, you know, you'll see that. And they've integrated into the Israeli body of Christ and, and a lot of Russians have as well. And you'll see some Arab believers with them. Um, so, and that's another problem. You've got Arab believers who take a political left-wing anti-Zionist line, oh, but they claim to be born again. Oh, man. But they hypocritically keep their mouth shut about the persecution of <laughs> Christians by radical Islam. Oh, they won't tell you. They never talk about what Hamas and Hezbollah and things do to Arab Christians. <laughs> they want to be on good terms with them so they'll be left alone so they'll take an anti-Israel. There's this check post movement. It's, it's absolutely terrible and hypocritical. Um, so, so it's multi, multi-faceted. Our ministry, Moriel, we, are in, we have our own evangelistic ministry here, but we have projects that are designed to support the indigenous body of Yeshua. We work only with local congregations, and there are local congregations that we work with and support, as well as certain under other ministries. Uh, we help a Christian school now. We help a ministry for um, believers in the Israeli army. Yes. We ha have a work that we s sponsor uh, among Bedouin Arabs, it's the only ministry among Bedouins, the desert, the camels, yeah, and the, the, the only one, and we're probably one of their leading sponsors. Well, we are one of their leading sponsors. Um, so we have work among Arabs, particularly Bedouins. Yeah. We have work among soldiers. We have work among children. And we, we they're not all Moria work. We just support, yeah. support the local. But then we have our own work as well. Uh, and much of that, not all of that, but much of that, it's it's evangelistic, and much of that is online. Yeah. But we have the same battles with the YouTube and so forth, of, and getting yeah up problem. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever you go, it yeah. seems to be the same. Yeah. Same issues. Uh, so we'll we'll get to the election part. That's a huge that's a huge ripple effect. That's that it's it's going to affect uh, the believers, even though they may not think about it because of the uh, ultra. Orthodox right that yes. is hooked up with the current government. Now, uh, just ask people to please pray for our Moriel team here. We have a good branch here. 
We have some great people. And I was with them yesterday when they were doing some evangelistic work among Arabs. Uh, and to just see saved Jews listening to Arabs, <laughs> you, you know, you see all this what's going on, but you see what God does. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's great motivation, by the way. Yes. Uh, Jacob, you, you spoke about some of the false things and heresies that are getting in uh, because there's even some so-called believers that would say that they need to support the third temple, that they need to uh, yeah. support this temple movement that's yeah. coming in, which is an antichrist temple that did not. But they, yes. these, are, these are believers. These are uh, supposedly believers. So you got a guy like John Hagee who supports uh, rabbis who are anti anti-missionary movements. Yep. So... Uh, it's a very complex picture. Yep. There are believers who do a lot of good for Israel. Yeah. But there are believers who do more harm than good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Well, we'll get to Israel in a moment uh, uh, as, we, as we get toward the end of the episode. Uh, well, let's catch up, Jacob. Uh, first on the list, and we want to make sure that everybody understands, uh, this, is a, this is a tsunami. And we're not talking about the election in the U.S. coming up, but this is a tsunami that it's been underreported for obvious reasons. The DHS... It's now clear and evident that they've been working with tech companies to throttle, remove, purge any other opinion except the one that's accepted, the current Marxist uh, leftist movement in the U.S. Uh, nothing else is accepted. So uh, literally these companies have been meeting with them, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Discord, Wikipedia, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Verizon, meeting with FBI, DHS uh, to coordinate the removal and censoring uh, as like an operation, uh, especially about elections. Uh, Zuckerberg came out on, on a podcast recently that said he's been meeting with the FBI, especially about the 2020 election. They were throttling, they were shadow banning, you name it, they did it. Now that's not even a question, it's, we couldn't even assume anymore. It's on record. Um, it, it, we, we've been talking about this, we've been sounding the alarm, but now it's, it's across the world for people to see uh, Jacob, what's your take on it, first of all, and then what do you, uh, not, not the solution, we know what the solution is, but uh, it, it's for people to wake up and see that in reality, there's really a tech censoring yes. from all angles. It's not just YouTube. I, I know YouTube gets a lot of the bad rap, but it's, it's other ones too. Look, it's an attack on democracy and free speech. You see it in New Zealand, you see it in Canada, you see it in Australia. But their real targets are Great Britain and the United States. That's right. That is the ultimate targets. The, 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 the Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the, those are peripheral targets. Mm. Once they get established in those countries, yeah. then they go after free speech and, and, and things like this yeah. in, in the United States and the UK. Yeah. When you have actual people, Antifa and Black Lives Matter rioting and burning week after week and they're allowed to do it <laughs> with total impunity yeah. and you're being lied to and being told that it is entrenched racist white extremists who are the real threat to national <laughs> security yeah. when they can't point to hardly any instances of it <laughs> except for the occasional individual. Right. You, the they, lone wolf. they just tell an open it's just that they build it on a lie. They're very much like Hitler, very much like Goebbels very much like the Stalinists. Mm. They've got the same spirit as the Stalinists and as the Nazis, both of whom, were, of course, were socialists. That is what you see happening. Now, it is not just the DHS. It is the Justice Department, mm -hmm. the intelligence community, call yep. it deep state, yep. and it is um, increasingly the Treasury Department, wow. the IRS being used as a political police force. Yeah, 87,000 yeah, 87, accountants with, 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 guns. with nine millimeters. <laughs> you know, and this is supposedly to fight inflation. <laughs> you, or you, global warming. Yeah, or, or tax evasion by billionaires. Yeah. You, you, you need 87,000 <laughs> IRS agents with guns to, go, to, to monitor 1,000 billionaires. I mean, yeah. It's absurd, it's a lie, but the fact that they're able to do it and get away with it and there's people who will still vote for them yeah. and who can still be that stupid. This is exactly what you saw with Bolshevism mm. and it's exactly what you saw in Nazi Germany. Yeah. People would have said Hitler was crazy at a better time. Yeah. But the nation began following a madman. Well, that's what's happening now. They follow madmen. Yeah. And, and I would say with, with 
you know, if Hitler had this technology. Yeah, oh God, have, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because now we see technocracy just, compl I mean, all of our lives are very much connected to technology yes. in yep. every way possible. Even those who are trying to get away from it, they can't. Yep. Uh, and, and those are the very things, the very tools that they use yep. to censor your life and to keep you from First Amendment rights in the U.S. Yes. Uh, and, and so we see it increasingly. Now, I don't know what kind of, obviously, and in, in, I was asking Natalie earlier today about what does the U.K. call the Charter, I know the Canada's Charter of Rights, what do they call it in England? Uh, certain rights. It was the European Charter of Human Rights, but the UK is no longer in the EU. Right. That's the issue now. Okay. So, so, so now you're getting to British common law. Okay. So now it's okay. I know the former foreign minister wanted to get away from that, right? Yes. Because of the Brexit issue and all that stuff. Uh, we'll we'll get to England in a moment. But do you think that's going back? It's going back to Brexit with Sunak and uh, and Hun. S Sunak is definitely a globalist. He's definitely a globalist. And there is an element that will, although he was pro-Brexit for political reasons, they, there are people who want to make Britain EU in all but name. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that there is that faction, there, faction yeah. within, even within the Conservative Party, there is that faction. They're globalists. Yeah. Sunak, look, it, it doesn't really matter Brussels. It matters now. Davos. Mm. It matters the World Economic Forum. Increasingly, much more. Increasingly, right? yeah. increasingly. Yeah. The people don't understand. It doesn't matter if it's Zelensky. It, it doesn't matter in, in the Ukraine. Yeah. It doesn't matter <laughs> if it's that ridiculous Sadam woman yeah. in New Zealand. Yeah, we'll talk it, about her today. They're yeah. all, they are all from Schwab. Yes. Yeah. So the real issue is now, okay, so... so so civil rights, civil liberties, especially in the U.S., the Bill of Rights and all that stuff, England common law, that's gone. It, it, it's it's the, for sure gone. The Second Amendment was under attack. Yeah. Now free speech is under yeah. attack. It's a war against the Constitution. Yeah. You've got the DHS and that terrible man who ought to be removed. In, yeah, Mayorkas. Mayorkas. Yeah. You look at it. Instead of protecting the border, instead of doing <laughs> what he's supposed to do by the Congressional <laughs> Charter, yeah. by the legislation that established... Homeland Security. Right. Instead of doing what he's supposed to, he's not doing that. He's making war on free speech. Yeah. Can you believe that? That, that yes. is absolutely nuts. I mean, what? I mean, you're being invaded. It's literally uh, yeah, an invasion. You can only read Pravda and its Vestia, better known as the New York Times or the Washington <laughs> Post. <laughs> yeah. But add to that now, all these, uh, you know, basically all these uh, uh, collaborators from Twitter to FB, you know, to yep. Facebook, to, you know, you, you name it, down the line. Now, Joe Biden is all of a sudden really interested in Twitter. Yes. He's very interested in Twitter because now he says we need to realize that it is, uh, they're spewing lies all over the world, he's saying. Now, they were really happy with Twitter. As soon as, as, soon as it's out of the control of the left. <laughs> yeah. As soon as it's independent, now well, it's a threat. It's a threat, yeah. So they're reviewing the contract, they're reviewing the purchases of uh of Musk, and I, I don't know what they could do, if they can actually uh, uh, be able to block it, but nonetheless, he's now in charge of Twitter. Uh, but now, of course, Twitter is gonna be a big problem for them, seemingly, unless they do something. Yes. Uh, but the, the tech stocks, all the stocks that we've been talking about, those that have stock, uh, seemingly Twitter, uh, Microsoft for sure, and, and Facebook and Google and the Alphabet company, uh, the tech stock's gone down. They, 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 are, they are going down quickly, yeah. but so is the viewership. Of mainstream media, yeah, they're fighting for their lives. <laughs> so when they see what's happening with Twitter, yeah, it scares them. Yeah, well, you know, it, it absolutely does scare them. When they see um, a, any kind of conservative trend, particularly in the Supreme Court, thanks to Mr. Trump's appointees, yeah. where you had the revocation of Roe v. Wade, which will not stop abortion, right, but it will st simply leave it up to the, the states. states. And it will leave it up to the voters instead of unelected judges. Right. Uh, or now, fortunately, affirmative action is 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 it's on the docket. It's on, it's, thank heavens. Uh, it just institutionalized racism. The left is beginning to go crazy, <laughs> and they're beginning to have a meltdown wow. over the present election. Wow. But the election is another thing. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But speaking of the Supreme Court justices, we were talking earlier today at lunch about just just the the the, the, the obvious. Obvious mental incapacity of some of these Supreme Court judges who they were appointed for. You, you tell me better. You, they were appointed for the reason what that they were they were X uh, X X chromosome, not X Y chromosome, yeah. right? And a certain pigmentation in their skin. But they really have written yes. nothing. Nothing contributing. There's really no 
amazing cases that they presided over or wrote great comments on, on, on previous cases. Uh, they're simply there yes. to fulfill the leftist ideology. Remember, those who can't do teach, <laughs> there are exceptions such as Alan Dershowitz. Right. But if you're no good in court, become a law professor. If you're no good on Wall Street, become an economics professor. If you're no good in a pulpit, become a theology professor. <laughs> now, there are exceptions. Right. But they are exceptions. Right. It is okay. Exceptions. So you've got Kagan, a left wing <laughs> Harvard academic yeah. with no real background in the practice of law. Yeah. She's just an ideologue, feminist. That's why she's there. Okay. Then you have the newly appointed woman who issued a decision favorable to pedophiles. That's right. Was it Brown? Uh, Ketanji Brown. Ketanji Brown. Yeah. Okay. Biden said she was appointed purely on the basis of race and gender. So right away, you eliminate 50% of the potential appointees because of gender, and then you, you eliminate most women. We want a black woman. 3% of the population, the other 97% of the population does not qualify for consideration as a Supreme Court justice um, because we're going to appoint somebody on the basis, not of qualification and experience, but of race and gender. Mm. And then they yell about discrimination. <laughs> then, they, 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 then they claim the, the, the white privilege. Then they claim, you know... The, a war on women. <laughs> then they, then they claim, you know, if they could tell what a woman is. She yeah, if they could tell what a woman. Yeah. yeah she see, 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 so you, what you basically have with Brown is a judicial bimbo, <laughs> a, a racist bimbo. Now, so to my ear, she would have to undergo a significant amount of upgrade and improvement to qualify as a bimbo. She, she's not even there. Exactly. She didn't know the difference between de facto and de jure. She didn't know the difference between what is established in law and what is established in fact. She didn't know basic legal terminology. No. Alito had to tell her, no. and she wrote it. And she's no. on the Supreme Court. Something that a first-year law student would know. She, but she was appointed because she was a Hispanic woman. Yeah. What you can't. I'm sure you can find the Hispanic woman who was at least legally there literate. Plenty, plenty. <laughs> if you wanted to go the Hispanic yeah. card, there are plenty good judges that could have yeah. been. Yeah. But she's she's a leftist. She she will fulfill the radical left ideologies, and and that's why they're there. I mean, that's the reality. It's 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 a yeah yeah. I I suppose they want stupid judges who will just vote the way they're politically told to by the establishment. That's it. Well, just like the, we don't know how to think legally. Yeah, but well, just like the constituents, the constituents yeah. are the same thing. I mean, the average voter doesn't really know. Yes, and, and, and they, they just basically parrot the same talking points. That's right. Yeah, and and the reality is they believe Katanji Brown, they believe Sotomayor, they believe uh, yep. the, these judges. Case gives. Yeah, but it feeds into yeah, the look, uneducated. Yes, yeah. I did not like ideologically. I did not agree with Ruth Ginsburg, but she wasn't stupid. Yeah, yeah. She, she pretty, now you replace bad. her, deliberately replace her yeah. with something that is racially and sex that is both sexist and racially motivated, yeah. discriminatory, and you intentionally look for a moron. <laughs> <laughs> moron in this sense, not the, the, the biologically. No, no, no. no I, 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 don't, I don't mean learning impaired. Yeah. Like you find somebody who, 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 who is juridically unqualified. Yes. That's you right. find the charlatan. You yeah. find the charlatan. You know, somebody who went went to law school on affirmative action because they couldn't get in yeah. if they weren't. Yeah. Well, they have a vice president that's like this. So yes. There you go. Uh, well, I read some of the Katanji Brown uh, decisions. On, uh, we talk about the uh, leaning yeah. toward pedophilia. Uh, literally rapists, pornographers, child pornography traffickers. And look at the way they hate Clarence Thomas. Yeah. A black American... One of the best jurists this country has ever had in modern times, certainly. A, a genius, certainly. And, and they hate the man. Yeah. They hate the man because he's black. Yeah. The, the, the blacks and the left hate him because he's a black person who they can't control, yeah. who thinks legally yeah. inst <laughs> instead of according to a, a yeah. globalist agenda. And basically hands it to them because he knows the law better than any one of them. So 
uh, well, well, they do hate any any uh, color person, any any Hispanic, any any black person that doesn't think like the left. They hate them. I yes, mean, look at, you know, Kanye West and look at you know Candace Owens and some of these folks that are, uh, I guess, more leaning toward conservatism. Uh, they really hate them. Uh, but let's let's talk about another situation. We talk about bad judges. How about bad politicians? In this well, find case, me a good one. Yeah. <laughs> in this case, you probably won't find any on the left, but. Let's talk about the Pelosi family. They've been on the news a little bit, all right? So uh, I'm going to open up the conversation and then let you have at it uh, just to set up the thing. Paul Pelosi opened a door, seemingly, according to the police, and he was attacked by the Pape. I think that he pronounced his last name. And the Pape is, is a, it, you know, has a history of being a radical leftist, nudist, uh, lots of things, lives on a bus, and, and, and just crazy stuff that he's done, right? Uh, attacks on the, this is according to the police report that has been almost coming out, but hasn't been really come out completely, uh, has been attacked and they, with hammers. They were both found in their underwear. And um, these are the facts, right? So broken window, hammers, underwear, two men. Nancy's not home. So Nancy's away in business. So are we looking at when the, when the cat is away, the mice will play? And uh, what exactly are we looking at here? Because the left has gone crazy with the story. I'll read you some of them after you comment because they're blocking and they're protecting Paul Pelosi from any kind of criticism. Go he, ahead, Jake. He was just in trouble a month ago for DUI, wasn't he? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> and they're picking on him. Yeah. So, okay. Now, anyone else in San Francisco, the police footage would have been made publicly available Instantly. Yeah. If it had not been a liberal Democrat and was a Republican, it would have been headline news every day. Yeah. Instantly. Instantly. Why won't they release the footage? Why have they not let this guy out on bail the way they let other <laughs> assailants out on bail or even no bail? Yeah. But <laughs> there's one set of rules for them yeah. and one set of rules for the rest of us because they're elitists. Now, now, now just look at this. You've got a radical naturist. In other words, a guy who runs around naked. <laughs> Seriously, that's what he does. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> homeless. Yeah, lives on a bus. He lives on a bus, he's homeless, and he's an illegal alien. So you've got an illegal alien who runs around naked and who has a Black Lives Matter flag yeah. uh, hanging on his trailer. <laughs> okay, and they find him with a hammer with Pelosi's husband attacking him, so they say. And all of a sudden, it's the, this is the fault of Republicans. It is because it is an expression of the 2020 violence. Yeah. Now, it's the, it is absolute madness. <laughs> the, the fact that they would even try it, but they must know there's enough stupid people to believe, to believe them. It. Yeah, especially in San Francisco. I mean, How I mean, no can offense. you, he's, he's, he's an illegal alien. Yeah. He's, he's a radical. With the rap sheet. With the rap sheet. Yeah. I mean, you think they love him? They probably make him congressman or something like that with that kind of, you know, th that kind of mark. But uh, well, here, here's more that's come out, Jacob, in the last 24, 48 hours. So, according to the police report that's being leaked out, he, before the police got there, the Pape and and the Pelosi spent thirty minutes together. Yep. Thirty minutes together, uh, alone. According to the police, uh, uh, he was led in by Pelosi. So a lot of things don't make sense. Yep. This was written by an NBC journalist. Uh, Al McGuire, very accurate. In fact, it was so accurate, NBC had to take it down. Yep. They deleted the story because they're censoring themselves over what he wrote. Uh, he's not a Q and uh, conservative. He's not a, no. a Trump supporter. Uh, it, I mean, all things point to where there's smoke, there's fire. I think this is broke back mountain stuff. Sure. Yeah, honestly, well, it looks uh, like honestly it. yeah. <laughs> Ham except for hammers. Except for hammers. So uh, now, this, check this, the left. The left says, you can't call Paul Pelosi a, a homosexual. You can't call him that. He says, you, you, you have no right to call him a homosexual. But they say, there's nothing wrong with homosexuality. It's just that it's not for him. So <laughs> anyone else would have been very happy to be, you know, the left would have applauded being a homosexual, but now it's not okay. Can you imagine if it was a Republican or a conservative <laughs> or? <laughs> it would have been everywhere. You know, it's the same thing. Yeah. At least Prince Andrew was held somewhat publicly culpable in England for his association <laughs> with Epstein. With Epstein, that's right. Why did Bill Clinton get away with it? Yeah, exactly. 
the media censors it. Yeah. Now, but then they want to censor you. So you <laughs> for saying the same thing. Now, Rex Chapman from CNN Plus says, he ran a story. Check this out, Jacob. says, Paul Pelosi cannot be gay because Nancy is so hot. She is so sexy, as he says. He can be gay because she's hot and sexy. The only I time she's going to be hot when she's burning in hell as a witch. Wow. That's going to be the hot stuff. Then she'll be a hot babe. Yeah. Uh, now the sexy stuff. I don't know. She's eighty. I think she's older than, than you know. I think my my grandma was probably a little bit older than her. But uh, it's, he says he can't be gay. It's not a bad thing. He says, but you know, gay he's not because she's so hot. I mean, this is ridiculous. It made me laugh more than anything else. But check this out. Hillary comes on, and she says, if you attack them, you're a racist, misogynist, anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> this is Hillary. MSNBC says this is. Uh, uh, suggested that Paul, Paul Pelosi was attacked mysteriously. Uh, it's, it's basically a hippie who attacked them. And it's part of the racism that enabled by conservatives. Again, Joy Reid. You have a, a radical, a guy who runs around naked as, as, as a political cause, <laughs> who, who, who's homeless technically, who's an illegal alien, and who has a Black Lives Matter flag, and somehow this is part of a conservative uh, conspiracy. <laughs> they, they, they've lost their mind. But not only have they lost their... They've, that's beyond desperation. Yeah. And they, do they really think people are that stupid? Well, some people are. Yeah. But... You know, you know, maybe, maybe Pelosi, Paul Pelosi is gay because he's married to uh, Nancy. I mean, yeah, you can take it the other way. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> you can take it the other way. Uh, but Dick Durbin comes out. Dick oh, Durbin comes on and he says, well, how dare you use your free speech to attack Paul Pelosi? He says, this is why we need to restrain misinformation under the guise of free speech. So yeah. at the end of the day, it's free speech. At the end of the day, is more taking away their rights. At the end of the day, is it's, it's rules for us and not for you, that kind of stuff. So, yes. oh man. So I, I think more is going to come out. I, we haven't seen the last of it, but yeah, you're right. He's been on the news. Paul Pelosi's been on the news. Not only the, uh, the, the the intoxication DUI, but also their stock trading. They they know more. Yes, than Pelosi. <laughs> look, the, why has Pelosi not been at least investigated yeah, for inside trading? For insider trading. Yeah, absolutely. By the Securities and Exchange yeah. Commission. I mean, she's got like a ninety percent success rate. The yes. best stock traders in the world have like at least. 50. I mean, that's like, a, that's a good one. Yes. She's got 90. People have made millions of dollars just by following, following her. Yes. I, I, I don't get it. But then again, maybe, maybe because I'm not a Democrat or something like that, I, I don't get it. But nonetheless, more yes. is going to come out. Now, from one crazy person to another, Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand has been running amok. Now she's emphasized got, the muck. Yeah. <laughs> she's got the farmers all up in arms. Listen to this. Because of her new policy on green policy, the green policy and agenda, tax on emissions of farm animals regarding their burping and their flatulation, meaning their, their, their farts, are going to be taxed because you just, it's called the burp and fart tax, literally, the burp and fart tax. Uh, it's going to be a high levy against agriculture, uh, against sheep, against cows, against, I mean, I guess New Zealand has a lot of sheep. And farmers are just going to lose it. They're going to, well, they're already losing it, but they're going to lose it all if this goes through. And now, you know, following the, the, the thinking of the Dutch farmers, the New Zealand farmers are now protesting. And, and it's, it's a big thing. It's, it's yeah. blocking roads, tractors, you name it. But again, this has been a long time coming, Jacob. You've been talking about Jacinda Ardern for a while, World Economic Forum, Protégé, et cetera. Tell me what's going on there. What do you see? I've been, as you say, I've been warning about that terrible woman for some time. You know, New Zealand used to have, well, it still does have more sheep than people. But there was about a one-third reduction, I believe, in the number of sheep in New Zealand. Hmm. I believe it was a divine judgment when they began building their abattoirs facing Mecca oh. in order to export into Islamic markets. Hmm. So they began building their abattoirs facing Mecca. I wow. believe it was a divine judgment on, on, on the sheep industry wow. in, in New Zealand. But now they've been hit again. When was that? Uh, you know, they're, they're losing the battle now. The first time was, it was Islam, now it's Semethicon. <laughs> this woman is absolutely out of her, out of her <laughs> mind. But nations get the leaders they deserve. Yeah. 
If people will vote for someone like Andrews in Victoria, Australia, oh, man. or if they will vote for someone like, like Trudeau in Canada, oh, man. or a terrible woman like that, these are all Schwab slobs. <laughs> they are all Schwab slobs. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. I mean, every single one of them have gone to that, that school, that the new leaders, new leaders uh, uh, school. All of them. Tony Blair's another yeah. one. All of them. Have come out radically <laughs> on the green agenda. Now, Wellington, Auckland, Christchurch have all uh, received protests, blocking roads. Uh, basically, everybody, it's, it's protesting the emissions tax. Now, let's look at this. The New Testament warns in the last days, those who will be forbidding marriage yeah. and forbidding certain kinds of foods. Yeah. They're yeah. trying really, to for, really. force the green agenda, they're trying to force a vegan, veg, a vegetarian Absolutely. agenda. Absolutely, yeah. And it, it's, it's exactly what Scripture said is going to happen. And it's a doctrine of demons. Of course it's a doctrine of demons. And it's a, it, it's absurd. Yeah. Now, now this, is, this is Netherlands, Canada... New Zealand. I don't know if Australia's gone through that. I think I think David told us. There Australia's are people in Australia who'd like to do it. Yeah, the the. Uh, and I'm not sure if they're that radical yet. I don't know if Albanese has gone that far into the green agenda, but I'm sure there's yeah people in within their within their party, and uh, they, they all want to pass this green agenda. They all want to make it happen, and under the guise of you know food production and protect the environment. The worst time to do it is now. Food production is so low. And we're looking at a 2023 disaster. And they're going to drive food prices up higher by doing it. Yeah. Oh. You know, it'll not just be starvation. It'll be engineered starvation. Yeah. The Stalin, Ethiopia in the 80s. You know, yeah. What's the, the way if Stalin used starvation against the Ukrainians. Yeah. Or the way Mungitsu used starvation in, in the Horn of Africa. Yeah. This goes back to the ancient world, to the ancient Assyrians, mm. when they would use starvation as a, as a military strategy against their enemies by using siege. Wow. You read about it in Josephus yeah. in 70 AD. So they the use of starvation as a military weapon, or wow. militarization of food, a weaponization of food. Yeah. And that's what it's coming to. Yeah. But on back of it is what Paul warned about. Mm. I remember reading about the siege of Jerusalem, both in 586 and 70 AD. Same thing. It was the, food, yep. the water supply, food yep. supply. Now they're doing it, but they're brazen about it. I mean, literally, they're... They're telling you what they're doing, and, and yet nobody cares. Nobody seems to care at this point, uh, because I think everybody just wants to go about their lives after the whole lockdown thing, and they, they, they're not expecting this to happen. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, the UN, even the UN has been warning about it. You uh, know, also what it is, is Eastern religion, Jainism. Mm. Uh, you know, the Jainism is a yeah. particular like a, version like almost of Hinduism. Yeah, like an aesthetic type. That, of, that yeah. is so radical. You know, it's, it, you can't own anything. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you have to respect the life of a, of a mosquito. You can't kill a mosquito or a rat. Yeah, that's Jainism. Wow. And this is what it is. Wow. So, so it's New Age Hinduism, Jainism, all yes. implicated into. But it looks like a tech. Yes. With, with the face of a technocracy. That's correct. Um, now another place that's really going really crazy right now is Brazil. So let's let's go to, from one part of the world. From the Pacific to, I, I suppose, the Atlantic, you know, obviously South America. Brazil selection. It's a tipping point right now. Uh, Brazil went through an election. Uh, Bolsonaro seemingly lost. Uh, Lula da Silva is back in, right? Uh, but he's bringing in socialism. But the call is now that this was a fraud. This was absolutely fraud. They have proof, they said. Uh, the, the, we'll talk about the church in Brazil because they're very outspoken about this at this point. There's a lot of evangelicals in Brazil. Uh, but after, uh, I guess in Brazil they have two rounds of elections, so they have to, the, the, yes. the president, if so, whoever's ahead has to win at least by, has to have 50% of the votes to go to the second round. So supposedly Bolsonaro had the 50%, but it obviously went to Lula da Silva. People are protesting. This is, this is insane. People are absolutely on the streets. Businesses have shut down. Manufacturing have shut down. Even the large Toyota plant has shut down because they don't want socialism. They don't want the Silva in there. They believe he's gonna be just as bad as he was for the first time he was president. But you know who was really happy about this? Narco trafficking. Uh, of course they uh, are. Yeah. The, uh, they were very happy. Someone else is very happy, China. Mm. Let's understand something. This is not being adequately reported. Correct. The director of the CIA, just prior to the election, went down to Sao Paulo and down to Brasilia. 
Now you got people to, yeah. who spoke critically of the election results were being arrested based on private correspondence held without bail based on private correspondence after Biden's CIA director went down there. Crazy. The people are reacting. Yeah. They're calling them like the January 6th protesters. Yes. Yes. It's pure Obama or Joe Obama's yeah. strategy. Wow. They're doing the same thing in Brazil they did. Yeah. Now, here's the question. Who benefits? China, obviously. Yeah. Um, is Hunter Biden on China's payroll? Is that man guilty of what ma many people would consider to be a de facto treason? That's right. Look at his business ventures in China. Mm. Look at what he's done on behalf of the party in China. Yeah. Is Hunter Biden a Chinese agent? Mm. I'm not saying he is. Yeah. I'm saying there is evidence and it warrants investigation. Absolutely. But a corrupt FBI will not investigate. No, they'll investigate the pro-life yes, yeah, the pro-life movement. Uh, they're asking the military to step in because they're trying to bring some semblance of order. I mean, this is getting out of control. Uh, now, let's talk about socialism, because this is what, what really is at mm, stake. But you know, Marco, sorry to interrupt. No, no worries. The same as Biden was elected, when the House of Representatives and the Senate yeah. were not taken by the Democrats, only the White House was. Yeah. It's the same thing in Brazil yeah. with the Silva. Most of the legislation it's and the national legislation is, is right center. Yeah. It's not left center. No. It's exactly Joe Obama politics. <laughs> now, Bruce, whose side is Biden on? Yeah, China. Or the World Economic Forum. Yeah. You know, which is probably, well, they just labeled the, yes. China, the leaders of the World yes. Economic Forum. Now, Brazil and Ecuador are the only countries in South America that are not socialist. This is by far a socialist continent. Uh, every other nation, in, in, in the Silva, when he was there, he sent a lot of money to Bolivia, Paraguay, to build up socialism there, to build up, of course, the, the legacy of Chavez, the legacy of Maduro now. Yes. Uh, Jacob, in a sense, I lived through socialism, but you were a socialist at one point. Uh, where does socialism go wrong? Why are so many, okay, to, that's one question. Here's a, probably the loaded question. Why are so many Christians in favor of socialism in the States and even in South America? There's a branch of Christianity that's growing with, within the Socialist Party. That came originally in South America from the liberation theology of Bonino and Sabrino in the late 60s. The Catholic. It was Catholic Catholic essentially Catholic, Roman Catholic in its orientation. There are left-wing in the... Uh, Tim um, from New York, the Tim guy, Keller, Tim Keller, Tim Keller. The access of, of, of pseudo evangelicism. There are people. Yeah, he's a Marxist. Yeah, in that groove, who would misinterpret the Book of Acts out of context. They held all things in common. Yes. Forgetting that that was a temporary provision in a city that Christ told them was going to be destroyed. Yeah, that, that the, is their call to. Yeah. That is their call to. to the yeah, to the city was yeah. going to be destroyed. Yeah. Um, and and you, you don't see that model in the Greek churches. You don't see that model in Antioch. You only see it at that time in the very beginning in a city that was under a death sentence. Wow. Um, you know, You're right. You know, but they try to make a template out of it. Like anyone else, taking a text out of context, an isolation from context, and making it a pretext. pretext. And so naive evangelicals will buy into it. <laughs> they think... Oh, it's justice and it's fairness and things like this. How come you have far worse injustices in socialist countries? Look, I'm not here to identify capitalism with Christianity. Right. I'm simply saying no socioeconomic model invented by men can have a theological basis. There are only principles. The more that something runs on biblical principles, the better right. it'll work. That's right. I'm not defending robber baron capitalism, which is practiced by Silicon Valley. Yeah, that's really you know, what it is. Why are these guys pushing socialism? Well, because they know it doesn't work. <laughs> you, when you go to Venezuela, you can make them sell the oil for whatever they want. You yeah. want, you know, you, you, <laughs> you can destroy economies with it. Yeah, you can control populations and destroy economies with it. They know that for all of its faults, capitalism, and there have been abuses of capitalism. That's right. Capitalism has given the highest standard of living and the most personal freedom to the most people. Mm. Why did I give up socialism? Yeah. One simple reason, it didn't work. <laughs>
and, the, and I've, know, seen it, I've seen it at work. When yeah. I was when I was fourteen, I read the book Animal Farm. Yeah. And although I was a socialist, that book always had an impact on me. Mm. And that book did tell you something. Yeah. It, like the rock band, The Who, Meet the New Boss, Same yeah. as the Old Boss. <laughs> um, <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Uh, just want to remind everyone, you know, those who are watching on YouTube, Facebook, uh, uh, Vimeo, Rumble, RTN, we are going to be taking questions at the end of this episode. So we're going to take questions of this episode. And then we're going to jump into backstage and we're going to go into Rumble, Vimeo, RTN, and Telegram. That's right. Yes. So uh, lots to keep up. You're everywhere now. I can't oh, even... Everywhere. Yeah. We're in Israel at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and in and, and the Book of Proverbs and the Hebrew Scriptures, there's a term, Evet Kimloch. Uh -huh. Evet Kimloch. It means when the slave becomes a master... He becomes more oppressive than the old master, <laughs> like Fidel. Yeah, Fidel Castro. Yeah, Maduro. And That's all right. Guys. So, um, so get ready for that. So, sending your questions. Start sending in your questions. Uh, I think Jonah's on there. Uh, Davy's on there. Jay's on there. So, send your questions, and we'll get. Uh, we'll put Jacob on the hot seat. So, if you're on the hot seat in Israel, well, you're always on the hot seat. Uh, right? yeah. You just live there on the hot seat. So, uh, now, Jacob, correct me if I'm wrong. Brazil has the highest amount of evangelical Christians in South America. In Latin America, yeah. yes. Uh, huge, huge revival. It went That's from it. about a 96% Roman Catholic population in 1970 yeah. to 72. And from 72 to the present day, that population of, of Roman Catholics has decreased by 30%. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's the highest amount of yeah. evangelical Christians. So is it is it a... It's not an irony. It's not ironic. It's, it's not coincidental yeah. that the target of the socialists, of the Marxists, of yes. the globalists, is a seemingly uh, a Christian country, not in a sense of overwhelming Christianity, but in a sense of conservatism. I mean, a lot of Brazilians are pro-life, a lot of Brazilians are pro-family, they're yes. anti-abortion, uh, they're anti-LGBT, even though there's, there's, there's seemingly a, a growing movement there, as, as everywhere in the world. But they're targeting a country to destabilize it from any kind yes. of Judeo-Christian foundation. Let's not forget with Sabino, Sabrino and Bonino, yeah. the liberation theology, which was adopted in Africa by Desmond Tutu, a Protestant oh, version of the liberal, Church of a liberal Lord. Protestant version of the same thing. Oh. Um, that was left, pro-left. When you had the growth of Marxism in Latin America, it was largely evangelicism that stopped it, particularly yes. Pentecostalism. Yes. So hence they know they have to target it for political reasons. A hundred percent. Yes. Well, same thing happened in Guatemala. Guatemala, Guatemala with yeah. Rio Smart and all those yeah. things, also Nicaragua. Yeah. Yeah. And in Nicaragua, they actually, I think uh, one of your friends in the UK wrote a book about the persecution of evangelicals yes. by the Sandinistas. Yes, Calvin. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's quite, uh, yes. th there's no coincidence. I mean, there's no coincidence. God blesses his people. Yes. And then the enemy comes in and tries to destroy yes. them. Yes. Yeah. So I guess that's their next target. So pray for Brazil. I think you were invited to go to Brazil a while ago. But yeah, maybe, I've been yeah. invited, but my, yeah. my problem is like, Spanish is one thing, but my Portuguese, I, I, can, I can read it kind of because it's close to Spanish yeah. and Latin. I just wouldn't be, I couldn't yeah. speak in Portuguese. So we got to get somebody that can... Uh, yeah, and, and not yeah. only that, the, the European Portuguese Versus. and the Brazilian <laughs> Portuguese is so different to my ears, wow. I just wouldn't... <laughs> is that like the French-Canadian in the... In the yeah, I can handle that. Oh, you're gonna I, I can handle thing. the French and, yeah. because my daughter speaks Parisian. Yeah. But and, and Latin American, Spanish, and Castilian is not such a problem. Yeah. But that's a problem. Portuguese, forget it. Yeah. yeah. So pray for Jacob about that, and, uh, and maybe we get to go. Now, another election. Now we're moving closer to home here, where we are today. Israel and the Middle East. Netanyahu's back in. Albeit a far-right coalition uh, that he's trying to he's trying to bring a far-right coalition. Uh, Lapid has conceded, as of, as of Tuesday, so it's been a while now, uh, but he's bringing with a, a right, I would say, as, as they describe it, a right extreme ultra-Orthodox. Okay. okay. So, uh, not saying in favor of either one, I'm just saying, well, Lapid is out, uh, the other, the other uh, prime minister is out, uh, Neftali's out. Yeah. Now Bibi's back in. I think he's a six time as prime minister. So yes. uh, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? And what comes with it? Let me begin at the beginning. Some time ago, 
we were making parallelisms between the political trends with Donald Trump and the political trends with Benjamin Netanyahu. That's you right. aren't catching up with Jacob. That's right. That now continues. Donald Trump is trying to make a comeback in the opinion of many people. Yeah. Benjamin Netanyahu is. Yes. Opinion of many people. So this, it seems to be the, a parallelism. Those yeah. two were akin to each other in many respects. Okay, you, you kind of see that. I know we're going to come to the American elections in yeah. a moment. I would take the light in the United States in the defeat of the Democrats, but I would not take the light in the ascension of the Republicans because right. I know what rhinos <laughs> and are no better. You know, I, yes, I want to see the Democrats yeah, lose, yeah. but I, with we'll people with, it, yeah. with people like Mitch McConnell and McCarthy, oh, and the, 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 I, 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 I have no faith in the <laughs> mainstream Republican Party. Yeah. Okay, well, in Israel, it's the same thing. I like Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay. Okay, generally speaking. He's under investigation on charges that he claims are trumped up, the same the as the same charges as Trump. against Trump that's is exactly. being trumped up. Okay, that's going on. But, and, and the, there are those who say that will be a, a legal distraction from his concentrating on responsibilities of yeah, office. Exactly. The prime charges, yeah. Right, but let's understand something. Right now, the world, not all the world, but much of the world, is propagating the lie that Israel is an apartheid state. It's coming That's, from, yeah. you know, like 22% of the university students in Israel are, are Arab. How, I, I remember South Africa during apartheid. Blacks couldn't go to university. 22% of the students here in Israel are Arab. You, you've met Arab states. Well, is yeah. anybody mistreating them with making them second class citizens? They're business owners. Yeah. They're doing very well, especially in the South, by the way. 20% yeah. of, of the nation's physicians. Or are Arab. Arab. Yeah. How can you possibly say it's a total lie? But having a government like this yeah. would reinforce the propaganda against Israel that it is a fascist apartheid. That is one that is one problem. Now here's the real problem. It comes from not from here, but from New York. Okay. I I, I used to see him around. I didn't know him, but I his people hated me. They attacked me a few times, even in New York. Maya Kahane. My the Jewish Defense League, okay. oh. in Israel, known as Kach. They are recognized by the U.S. State Department and the Israeli government as a terrorist organization. Whoa. But they have a political wing, much the same as Sinn Féin was the political wing of the IRA. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have the religious Zionist party yeah. is the political wing of Kach. What, what, what was written wow. the JDL founded by Maya Kahane. Wow. Okay. Uh, a terrorist. Yeah. yeah. And and that and they hate Jewish believers. They hate believing Jews. Wow. They hate believing Jews more than they hate anybody. Yes. They hate believing Jews more than they hate radical Muslims. Wow. And this will be the coalition partner with Netanyahu. Whoa. Because of this unworkable system of proportional representation yeah. that has messed up Germany that would have messed up Britain if the Liberal Democratic Party had their way, mm. and that certainly has wrecked nothing but havoc in Israel. You cannot form a government without giving these minority parties a disproportional amount of power and leverage they wouldn't have because you need them. Yeah. Now, let's understand, it's, it's an unworkable form of democracy. Now, let's understand something. In the 1970s, under Menachem Begin, the left wing of Israel, the Labour Party, the Ma'arach, was deposed by Begin. Okay. Begin did it by making a coalition with religious parties. That's how they started. Okay. okay. That's how they got power from the Labour. Wow. Now, then, however, the agreement was, give us control of education. Give us control of the, of, of the interior ministry. Give us control of culture. And things of that nature. Now, Begin the was, rabbis was not religious. No, Begin. There, no, there, no. Begin was not. Okay, but, but he, he had to. He, he he believed in God and so forth, yeah. but he was not orthodox. orthodox. Yeah. Okay, but the orthodox said we want to control the ministry of of religious affairs. Obviously, we want to control the ministry education. of education, things like culture, things of that nature. Okay, so, but the treasury, and the military. And, and so forth, would be controlled by the Likud. Likud, yeah. Okay, okay. Who, who are followers of Jabotinsky. But that's another thing. Okay. 
So that goes back to that. Now, however, in the new coalition, the Religious Zionist Party, run by it, um, Itamar uh, no, Bar Gabir, okay, and not only him, but Bezalel Somerich. They want to control the police <laughs> and they want to control the defense ministry. Whoa. So now you're not just talking about them wanting to control religion and culture okay. and education. Now they are wanting the real muscle. Wow. That is the big change. Wow. And that is a danger. And the hypocrisy of it. Remember, most rabbis condemned Zionism. Most rabbis condemned Ben-Gurion. Most rabbis were against the state of Israel. Mm. Even liberal reformed rabbis only changed their position because of the Holocaust. Mm. Only because of the Holocaust did they become pro-Zionist. So all these New York rabbis yeah, were totally against it. They were totally against it. Right. But now that there's a Jewish state despite them, they want to control it. <laughs> okay. They want to control something that they were against. Yes. Yeah. The hypocrisy of it is unbelievable. Mm. But when you have to make a coalition yeah. because you have proportional representation, what are you going to do? Yeah. Not only that, but these parties use their muscle and leverage to prevent any kind of constitutional change that would put an end to proportional <laughs> representation because then they wouldn't be able to blackmail yeah. it, everybody. Wow. This yeah. is what you're dealing with. Yeah, they're not going to vote so, for their destructions. Mr. Netanyahu, to hold that coalition together, would have to sell his soul to the devil. Wow. That's what's And happening. I like Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think he's been treated fairly by the media. Mm. But he'd have to sell his soul to the devil. And these parties, they hate Jewish believers. Wow. Hate. I was here when they... I know it was Kach. I know it was people from Kach who burned the Baptist house twice. Mm. I remember they attacked the Christian bookshop in Haifa. I, I, it was people who, who were Kahani's devotees. Wow. This all comes from Kahani from New York indirectly. Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people know the, the inside ballgame as well as you described it. I think they see it as, well, they're just making coalitions. But yeah, they, see, a lot of people don't realize certain things. The first chief of staff of the Israeli military was an American general, I was a gen from, from American military officer from George Patton's staff, hmm. who came, he, he was, he was the Tantalup, he was the chief of staff of, oh, of, of, in the war oh, for independence. Okay, in the war for independence, who broke the siege of Jerusalem. Hmm. The Israelis didn't know how to fight, they did with the war refugees coming out of concentration camps. They okay. got the, the first pilots, of the IDF, of yeah. the Israeli Air Force. Were Jewish Americans? They were Jewish American pilots and, and British. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, they were British and, and American. Yeah. The, 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 Herzog, the president, president yeah. Isaac Itzhak, son, his father was Heim Herzog. Yeah. He was a British military officer. These guys were, wow. they fought the, they fought under Montgomery against the Nazis. <laughs> it was the Brits and the Amer and, and there were Christians who helped them, like General Wingate. Okay. Um, they knew how to fight. It was diasporic Jews from America and England who, came. who knew how to fight. <laughs> Golda Meir grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know, <laughs> people do not... Menachem, uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, yeah. he speaks perfect American English. Yeah. He went to MIT, he speaks perfect American yeah. English. Really? Okay. Lapid, the same thing, grew up in, he lived in San Francisco as a yeah, kid. Lapid. These guys... People don't realize most of this stuff comes to Israel from the United States. <laughs> most of it comes yeah. from the United States. And it, that includes the Religious Zionist Party. It comes from the seminal influence of Maya Kahane from Brooklyn, wow. founder of the Jewish Defense League. It, it evolved from that. Mm. And now it's, now it's a monster you can't control. Yeah. See, people have no idea the average Israeli has no idea. When Israel was forming with the Zionists and they were fighting the British after the Second World War, after the Holocaust, and the British were putting them in detention camps and things like this, you had the left wing, the Pamak, but then you had Svilumi, 
the, the Stern gang, Begin's people, they follow Jabotinsky, okay? Mm. They follow Jab. The left-wing American Jews supported what became the Labor Party, Ben Gurion's <laughs> people. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Maya Lansky, <laughs> the Jewish gangster, yeah. with Bugsy Siegel and yeah. Ben. And, you know, Lucky Luciano, Maya Lansky supported Jabotinsky. Wow. The, the weapons coming in, they had a ship that was sent from New York with weapons for Begin's guys, and, <laughs> and, and Ben Gorian's guys sunk the ship Whoa. because you had Jewish American gangsters with support, with supporting Jabotinsky's guys. Wow. And you had the other Jews with liberals so supporting Ben Gorian. People have no idea that's a complicated of what of how it happened. Yeah. You had a division in American Jews. Wow. Between the left wing ones and the right wing ones. And the left wing ones saw the right wing ones as gangsters. <laughs> that's why when when Lansky tried to evade or avoid prosecution in the United States yeah. of racketeering drive, he came here. Oh. And then and Golden Meir threw him out. <laughs> It went to the Supreme Court here. Really? Yeah, and, and, and Golda Meir threw him out. And uh, well, anyway, he appealed to Begin, you know, because I helped. I helped the Stern Gang. Yeah. The, the, the Stern Gang were the real sh shooters of, of it was Itzhak Sharon and Itzhak Shamir and Begin. They were they were they blew up the King David Hotel. Oh. And these guys, oh. these were Jabotinsky's guys, oh, back, back, back by the American Mafia. Terrorists. Yeah, the yeah. Jewish Mafia. Oh. But, so that, it, it goes way back to then. And most people do not oh, understand yeah. this stuff. Yeah. They don't know about, you know, they, they don't know about Maya Lansky. They don't know about, about Maya Kahana. Mm -hmm. They don't know about Golden Meir. They don't know that this stuff came from the States, yeah. but it's here. It's That's here. why you see the same things happening with Begin that happened with Trump. Mm. Well, well, Bibi, yeah. It's an Bibi, yeah. It's, this, is a fit, this, this country is in certain respects a 51st state. Yeah. Not only militarily supported. You, you see the popular culture. It imitates oh, yeah. California. Yeah. Today we went to a, a hamburger yeah. joint where they had an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like we were at a 50s diner in California. <laughs> uh, no, no, everything is its very much like it. I mean, it's, I know it's not the second language, but yeah. Russian and Russian will be the second language. But No, English, the, English is the second language. English, English is the second language. Oh, man. Then Russian. Then Russian. Okay. Russian and Arabic, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Now, let's talk about the religious Jews because hundreds of them visited the Temple Mount. Visited the Temple Mount on Election Day. Yep. Now, this caused a lot of things with, uh, uh, you know, with Arab yep. you know, political party. They were saying this is this is uh, if they don't stop this is going to lead to a war. And yep. all this stuff. Now the Arabs are also they have a party in the in the uh, Knesset. Yep. So they're part of that representation. So the religious Jews are going up to the Temple Mount. The Arab and the coalition are saying no 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 no. I mean this is this is a, a, a very divided house. It could be a house of cards. I mean that that's what happened to Lapid and Naftali. They couldn't get anything going. Yeah. Uh, and, and and they had to call an election after election. So well they had to make a deal with the left. <laughs> and Netanyahu has to make a deal with the religious right. right. Yeah. There's no winning here. Well, if Lapid and Begin, I'm sorry, uh, and Netanyahu, yeah. and Begin's son, Mahan Begin has a son. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And if they had made, if they had had the sense to come together, there may have been an alternative. Mm. But we're they're not, fighting with each other. Yeah. Well, you often see that, right? You often see, uh, yeah. you know, maybe allies become enemies and, and, yep. and so forth and so on. I mean, it's politics, right? But uh, now Netanyahu, now, him in power, are, are, is more secure against Iran, less secure against Iran? It'd be, it, it would be more, put it this way, if Trump had been president, North Korea would not likely be shooting rockets over Japan again, missiles yeah. over Japan again. Yeah. Or Korea. Or, yeah, Korea. I mean, uh, they would not be shooting missiles over, North Korea would not be shooting missiles over Japan. And, and Putin would not have invaded the Ukraine. You know what I'm saying? And Taiwan would not have been under, under that kind of threat yeah. if, if Trump had been in the White House. The enemies see weakness. Mm. Iran is desperate the way China is. It has an internal crisis. It needs an external enemy. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. But if they see weakness, 
they're then for it. now they have to deal with a strong leader. Mm. They know that Netanyahu is not going to be a weak leader. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Some of his uh, some actually some of his enemies, even Netanyahu's enemies, uh, uh, Zaki Hanegbi, uh, he, he says, well, you know, he's, he's going to strike Iran if Iran does anything that's that's wrong. wrong. He, you know, Netanyahu yes. has that kind of. That's a kind of resolve, but I, I, let's talk about Iran for a minute because they're in deep trouble. I mean, protest after protest after they killed that, that young lady yep. uh, by the Iranian guards for not wearing her hijab the right way. Uh, the, the protests haven't stopped. The 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 the, the real the the the, the, uh, yeah, the currency the currency the, yeah real it's it's below like a thirty year low. I mean, yes, it is absolutely in the toilet and going to get worse. Oh, man. And and they're bringing Hezbollah and and, and Hamas fighters, fighters into, to, Iran. into Iran to try to quell them down. I mean, the media is not showing this, but students, business owners, manufacturers have all turned against the mullahs. Look, when Putin is going to North Korea and Iran for armaments, yeah, and when Iran is going going to Lebanon and Gaza for fighting, <laughs> you know, desperate people do desperate things. Yeah. I don't know how far Iran's going to go. I mean, you remember when, uh, uh, what was that, that other leader that went through this and he killed a bunch of college students uh, um, during Obama's era? I forget his name from Iran. Um, he thought he was an imam. Ahmadinejad. Yeah, Ahmadinejad. He did the same thing. I mean, they yeah. had, uh, he quelched it by killing them. Uh, I mean, they're doing that. There's a lot of people who have been killed. Yes. A lot of students have been, have been put in prison. Uh, what's... I know Iran's biblically an important And piece. Obama, Obama... Gave him the deal. Yeah, Obama's... <laughs> gave him the, so is Biden going to get Obama the deal? sided with the mullahs, in effect. Yes. And oh, Biden will Biden. do the same. The only political restraint there will be now on Netanyahu yeah. will be Biden. Mm. Wow. And that might change in a couple... In, well, this, this, maybe this coming... It's week. going to be hard for him to yeah. do it with, yeah. the, with the Republican Congress. Now, Iran is, is launching new satellite carrying rockets, going to, to Russia for uh, basically nuclear programs. I, I mean, they, they yes. think they have it in the bag yes. with Biden. That's what they're acting like. Uh, I, I know it's important. Iran's important biblically. It makes yes. scripture. Prince of Persia. Prince of Persia. Uh, do you see it coming sooner, Jacob, or delayed now that you have a, a strong leader in place and Iran has to play nice for a while? And perhaps the Dems don't have as much... Uh... Peace comes through strength. Right. Peace comes through strength. So there's two possibilities. Before Benjamin Netanyahu was able to form a coalition, which may take, take up to a month and a half, Oof. they could do something imminently while there's still somewhat a transitional political instability in right. Israel. Or they're going to be in a situation where they know that they're up against a strong leader who's not going to play around with them. Yeah. And who's not going to be as restrained by Biden after the American elections. This so so they know that. Yeah. So it does raise the possibility that they may do something drastic in the short term. Whoa. But if they don't do it in the short term, yeah. it's less likely they're going to be able to do it in, in the, the ne long. nearer long term. Yeah. Because they're not going to have the Obama... Yeah. The same power of Obama in Washington, and obviously they're going to have to deal with Netanyahu. So I was talking to Davy about that today. We've been hearing rumors, and, and there's just rumors around, but they, they have some, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. That Iran is pushing this, you know, whether it's a it's a nuclear, whether it's a nuclear uh, a tactical, yes. whether it's a dirty one, uh, seemingly fast. Yeah. Probably because of what you're saying, this transition is going yes. to take some time. We need to do it. The American elections are next week. Uh, it, it, it needs to happen really quick. Now, uh, Israel's still hitting Gaza. Israel's still hitting Gaza. Gaza which the, the, and the, Syria. The rocket factory that they have there. Right? Yes. For all, all sponsored by Iran, by the way. All, all sponsored Iranian by Iran. sponsored. Yeah. And, uh, but also, in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia is now going toward China and ending some of that relationship with the U.S. And Russia. And yes. Russia. And, yeah, China and Russia. So, uh, dollar dominance seems to be less and less... In that direction. So. The only thing is the, the brick countries are in trouble themselves. That's the only thing. <laughs> the only problem the is the dollar wins yeah. by default. Yeah. The, 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 you see, it's it's not what is in the news, it's what isn't. Yeah. When you talk about the Middle East. Yeah. For instance, Lapid said 
Israel stands with the Ukraine and the Ukrainian people, and we stand with the West. Right. But we're not going to become military participants. Correct. Okay? You want to bet. Right now, from Marful, the Israeli Arms Development Agency, it's an industry owned by the government that develops... Weaponry. Yeah. Okay. It's like the American DARPA. Type. Oh, DARPA. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a British, Israeli group of DARPA. They are in the Ukraine watching those Iranian drones, mm. learning everything they can from okay. those Iranian drones yeah. to improve their own Defense. Iron Dome yeah. system yeah. against those drones. Yeah. It's it, it, no, they're not going to tell you that, <laughs> but that a full the Israeli equivalent yeah. DARPA is is there doing it now, this mm. very moment. Right, and they're, they're although they may not sell the Iron Dome to Zelensky, yeah. there's the people who know how the Iron Dome works are still advising him on how to deal with yeah. them. <laughs> it's it's in the Middle East. It's not what you see. That's always the most important. It's what's not being said. Mm. Now let, let me tell you. Let me ask you about this one. Two countries in the in the Five Eyes, uh, which have been Canada, United States, England, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, they two countries have already backed out of moving the embassy into Jerusalem. So Australia did it. Now couple, Britain. Now Britain does it, right? So it, it's that a sign to Netanyahu? Don't count on on Rishi Sunak. Don't oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Okay. So less and less res less and less backing from the five eyes. Yep. Biden's already a done deal. That's a done deal. Trudeau never liked them. Yep. Uh, Israel stands alone. Increasingly. Yeah. Well, they're hoping, obviously, for a return of a yeah. conservative or, or Trump or, yeah. or DeSantis or somebody. Right, right. Uh, now, Blinken confirms today he wants a two-state solution yep. or else. I'm wondering what the or else means. <laughs> Well, well I mean, this is Blinken, I and mean, don't take him seriously. According to the United Nations, according to the League of Nations, according to the British government, according to the Jordanian government, there have, has been a two-state solution since 1948. <laughs> You're right. It's not what they think. It's all that. hypocrisy. Yeah. It's Jordan. Look, it's the Menlaus complex. A left-wing Jew was a traitor to the Jewish people. And he's one of them. Mm. Mm. Garland is another. Yeah. Well, almost, Zuckerberg is another. Oh, left wing Jews, and and they're in the in in in, the, in, in Congress as well. Durbin. Yep. Right. But he's not a Jew. Oh, he's not a Jew. What, what's my thing? Feinstein. Feinstein. Yeah. No, the other guy. Um, Blumenthal. 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 Horrible Blumenthal. man. But but now then people will say, oh, you see all these left wing Jews. That, Wait a minute, what about Mark Levin? What about Michael yeah. Simons? What about Dennis Prager? <laughs> yeah. What about Ben Shapiro? What it, about recently, the, yeah. Yeah, what about the right wing Jews who yeah. are standing up and blowing the whistle? You know, they're just bigots. <laughs> yeah, they're just, just on both sides yeah. of the both of sides of the aisle. Yeah. Now the UN is it's getting radically active against Israel again. Uh, now there's a commission now. There's a commission inquiry yep. on what happened with Hamas last year. Um, it's all Israel's fault. Yeah. So this is again the 1975, going back to 1975, 1979, 1991. Even when uh, you mentioned uh, Chaim Herzog, yeah, uh, who famously tore up the, the the inquiry that they were trying to do yes. in 1991, uh, to to I guess to the shock of all the people in the UN that Israel actually had to, had to do that. But now they're saying that the UN Independent International Commission of Inquiry (COI) for short. Uh, basically wants a report of what happened in May of 2021. So uh, it's going to be human rights. It's going to be uh, trials. It's going to, I mean, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, really. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, but the only one that's really interesting was uh, UNGA, which is the UN National Ger Gen uh, General Assembly. Yes. They are voting and they voted 152 to five for Israel to get rid of its nuclear weapons. Now, I don't know if that's going to go anywhere either. Because, no, it isn't, yeah. especially because Israel's never acknowledged having any. Yeah. <laughs> well, Canada, Israel, Macronesia, Palau, and the United States uh, were the only countries that voted against it. 24 abstain, including some European members, which is interesting, but 152 yeah. voted against them. Zachariah 12, all yeah. the nations of the earth will come against Israel. Yeah, absolutely. And it's happening very, very fast. Yeah. And I think ultimately this is, uh, 
so for uh, for a Christian Jacob and and by the way we just we're just winding down so start sending your questions now if you have the questions already we'll take them uh, but as a Christian Jacob just to finish before we go into back uh, into questions in the backstages uh, what does this mean when you see Israel so prominent in the news you see nations coming against you see their enemies emboldened and yet you see seemingly well it's not seemingly it's it's, it's true uh, instability one. One prime minister after another, one prime, you know, here in Israel, here in England, here in, in, yep. in Australia. Uh, what do you see? What do you tell somebody as a Christian, as a, even a young Christian? Hey, pay attention to this. Don't look at all the distractions. But t in a nutshell, what as a see? Christian, when you yeah. see the systemic and global political instability, Britain, be, Britain is exchanging prime ministers as fastly as quick as Italy used to. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Israel the same. You know, there's one after another. Changes of government. When you see this kind of instability, we know, we know what's going to happen. That a confusion and an instability and an insecurity is being satanically orchestrated in order to prepare the way for the emergence of the Antichrist. Yeah. He will come and bring a relative or perceived stability to an unstable global political environment and a perilous and it's at a very perilous yeah, time. It is unstable right now. You'll have the most perilous time in human history, and you'll have him emerge. Mm. And people will believe him, and so will many professing Christians. It's already on the way. I mean, you, you have Absolutely. so many Christians going to socialism. Yep. So many Christians going into supporting the Third Temple yep. already. Already. I mean, it's not even the guys aren't even here yet, and they're supporting it. And uh, one thing I saw, Jacob, was really interesting. It's, you know, when the kings of Judah and the kings of Israel, one after, uh, Israel yep. first, and then Judah, one king after another was taken down. Yep. And then Nebuchadnezzar shows up on that day. Yep, with the Babylonian captivity. Yeah. <coughs> is that a sign? Of, of course it is. Okay. Well, look, when you have an out-and-out out antichrist, when you have an out-and-out out antichrist, Somebody who puts himself in place of Christ and says, I am God Almighty, considered to be an evangelical leader. We're talking here about Stephen Furtick. Yeah. <laughs> if that's the Christian church, if that's the supposedly evangelical Christian church, what do you expect from the world? Mm. And none of these so, so called, let's say. There'll be many antichrists. Furtick is yeah, one of them. Yeah. But the, but the one who's coming. Yeah. Well, look at the Christian leaders, right? They say the millennial ones, the hip ones, whatever they call the skinny jeans. Yes. None of them care about prophecy. None, none of them. them. None of them. Even, let's say, even if one of them had a superficial understanding of it, that would be an improvement. They don't. But they actually speak against it, like if yes. it's a bad thing. Yes. Yeah. In which you see a lot of young Christians, of course, that they, they don't want to know because they've been told you, don't, you will never know. I remember talking to a friend of mine says, I don't get into prophecy because there's so many views. or so, It's confusing. Yes. And so he, he just rather not deal with it. You That's know, right. The Church of England says this. You know, the, this denomination says that. And so It's the cafeteria. Yeah. Forget about the whole counsel of God. Yeah. We'll have this, not that. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Incredible. All right. So, Jacob, we're going to put you on the hot seat. Let's turn this Let's on. Let's do it. Okay. We're not going to ask you about the Nancy Pelosi being oh, sexy. Oh, to turn it back off, though. We'll yeah. <laughs> we're not going to ask you about Pelosi being sexy, you know, but, uh, and hot herself. But, uh, you know, we're just going to put you on the hot seat. So, uh, Jacob, uh, as a, I, have, uh, I have come across a Messianic Jew named James Scott Trim, who says that Gentile believers should eat kosher. In that Peter's vision, a blanket descending down from heaven, does that refer to being able to eat pig, etc.? How do you deal with that? It was plainly on kosher food. We have uh, some recorded teachings and also printed material on our website. Mm. The one I would point you to is the New Galatians. Okay. The New Galatians. I'd point you to that. We deal with this issue. Forget about people putting you under bondage to the law of Moses. Now, again, my family has always eaten kosher. For reasons of culture, for reasons of testimony to unsaved Jews, maybe personal devotion, but never anything that they would put on anybody else. Mm. When you see people putting people under the law, keep away. Yes, Peter was in the house of Simon the Tanner and Jaffa, which is about 45 minutes from where I'm seated. 
and he, he came down there, and there were there were bacon sandwiches, oh, and, and you know, and, and it was and there was shrimp, and, and and lobster salad, and he was told to eat it. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. In fact, uh, um, you know, I, I know Jay's uh, Jay and Dave are watching, and Jordan's watching. We ought to put that that video, uh, the new Galatians, on um, during the week, and uh, maybe. Uh, the, the spirit expressly says in the last days yes, we talked about right. the yes. those who forbid marriage and, that's and, right. and food. So, uh, second question, Jacob, uh, can we ask Jacob what will happen when BB will be premier again? So I think we talked about that. We right? talked yeah, about it. Yeah. Uh, in a nutshell, what do we expect? More instability? I would expect um, more pressure from the United States. Mm. Biden going crazy. Oh man! But he could be restrained by a Republican Congress. Okay. Question about restraint. My personal one, because I just thought about this when talking about restraint. The Holy Spirit is still restrain. The restraint are still restraining. Yes. How much and for how long? I mean, I know you're not talking about dates, but does it look like it's it, it, the restraint is it's it's less and less. God's allowing absolutely. More more. Okay. Go more and more. Okay. Uh, question for Jacob. What does he think? Uh, the Yanuka Rav Shlomo Jedua, uh, Yehuda Beri Shita. Wow, I don't understand the question either. Uh, question: What is? What do you think of Yanuka Rav Shlomo Yehuda? Some, I don't know who that is. You know who that is? Like the claiming to be the Messiah. Messiah oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Another, he, another guy with Menachem Schneerson dead. I saw his picture today. Yeah, yeah. All over the and place, the yeah. Lubavitch claiming he was Melek Mashiach, but he yeah. hasn't risen from the dead. They're looking for someone else to fill that gap. They've done it with Bobby Sala. Some people did. It was a mystical rabbi to whom they ascribed miracles. They certainly did it with Menachem um, Schneerson. Yeah. There has been a long history going back to Simon Bar Kokhva, going back to Jacob Frank, mm -hmm. going back to Shabbat Taisvi. There have been so many false messiahs in the history of the Jewish people after rejecting the true one, he is just the latest. Oh, and he's only coming into vogue because the star of Schneerson is fading. Mm. There you have it. Good answer. Um, can you give a commentary on the coming digital currency as it relates to the end times mark of the beast? Well, so obviously it will be a stepping stone towards it. But I point out that Mr. Sunak the new Prime Minister of Great Britain, is a globalist mm. from the camp of Schwab. And although he was Brexit, he is pro-digital currency. Very much so. Very, very much so. Uh, by the way, so is uh, Jerome Powell. Sure. In, our, in, our, in, in, in the Federal Reserve here. So um, I guess more coming. I mean, I know, I mean, David can tell us a little more about it. Australia is it's by far a little bit further ahead. Because they try, they, they to, always uh, try to push these things in Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. Canada, but the real targets are the U.S. and U.K. Yeah, and I think that target's getting close, it's like the vector. You know, you're just getting closer. Right. Yeah. Uh, does Jacob? Okay, I guess Jacob. This you got an invitation. Jacob and the Morial team. Any plans to come to Melbourne, Australia? We'd love to as soon as we as, as soon as the warlock is dead. <laughs> <laughs> When the Warlock is dead, I'll be down at the South Bank Center. I'll buy you an Italian dinner on Lonsdale Street, when it re uh, in Greek Taverina, and I'll buy you an Italian dinner down on Ligon Street when the restaurants reopen once the Warlock is dead. All right, there you have it. Okay, so put, put it down, mark it down on, on video. I'll see you down at Mooney Ponds. <laughs> I heard they got great food there, though. Oh, the, yeah. Well, before COVID, they yeah, did. Yeah. Now I don't know if they have any food. Oh, man. Uh, Greek, Italian, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I'll be praying so we could all go. Uh, any info on jail cells and sounds coming from beneath the Euphrates River? Found out when it got low water levels. Are the four horsemen different from the four angels in chains? Hmm. Interesting question. Uh, Euphrates River. Okay, the, yeah. the, the, the biblical association with the Euphrates is more the frogs. Okay. 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 What about the angels underneath the uh, that are in chains? The, these are principalities. Okay. The demonic powers that are being restrained that are going to be unleashed. Okay. But that happens in tandem with the Antichrist and false prophet. Okay. Okay. And I guess the question would be, you know, anything to do with the four horsemen? Not really. No. Not really. Yeah. Uh, despite the number four being there, it's, it's not the same. It's no, like, you, you always have a, 
a satanic plan that will somehow mimic what God is saying. Okay. 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 Gotcha. Um, counter plan. Yeah. Counter plan. Okay. So I got the questions. There's six questions. I think there's another one. Oh, here we go. Uh, do you believe that Israel will be the last democracy to fall before the Antichrist is revealed? That's an interesting question. Um, I do not believe democracy will be here in any country mm. when the Antichrist emerges. Is Israel the last one you think? I don't think Israel will be considered. In certain respects, Israel is not truly democratic even now. That is true, isn't it? Because it's, of proportional representation. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's not even. A, I mean, can you consider it a socialist country? Israel was founded by socialists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all. It was always a mixed economy. Okay. Okay. Very, very true. Uh, I think James, that's the last one, right? I think that was it. That was the last one. Okay. Very nice. All right. So Jacob, we'll let you off the hot seat. Thank you. Okay. We'll turn it off. Uh, we will wait for the signal here, but uh, we appreciate everyone that watched on YouTube and everyone that watched on Facebook. I think we're on Instagram today. We were on Instagram. Yeah. Um, we're going to be signing off from those platforms. Um, the tech world is really yeah. DHS and all that stuff. Yeah. Like We'd there. like to advise you that we have other platforms. Yeah. We have Rumble, we have Odyssey, we have RTN, we have MorielTV.org, and we uh, are getting more. Vimeo. Vimeo as well, uh, and Telegram. Roku. Roku? Not, we're no, not, not getting Roku, yeah. Telegram. A Telegram, yeah. Telegram. Please, the less you watch the villains, you know which villains I mean, YT, please watch us on other platforms and channels. Yeah. So as we sign off, Please go to those. I think, uh, uh, Jay, you're providing the links for those and people can get on those to their favorite one. Yeah, so the links are there on the chat. Uh, jump over to the other side. We'll give you some time to jump over there. And uh, if you really want to know what Jacob thinks, I know he has a hard time getting it out. Yeah. Uh, sometimes he's, he's, he doesn't tell you all that he knows, but he holds back a little bit. Uh, wait until you see him with his hair down. When his hair is down, it's, it's a different show. It's called Backstage. Get to the backstage. Jacob's going to take some water right now. You get there, we'll be there in a few seconds. As soon as Jay tells us we're good, then you're really going to know what Jacob thinks. So jump over to the other side and meet us there.